Hello, I am the Nerdy Apologist, and today we are going to finally finish responding to Hemant Mehta's, or the Atheist Voice's, 78 Questions for Christians. Now before we begin, I just want to make sure, I just want to remind you to please like and subscribe, this video, subscribe to my channel, and please be sure to share this video with as many people as possible. Really want to try to get growing. Alright, so on with the rest of the video. This is right. Who or what do you think is responsible for natural disasters like earthquakes or tsunamis? The laws of nature are what cause natural disasters. Now, I already know what a lot of atheists are thinking. They're saying, oh, so you're saying that God isn't involved in it at all? No, God set up the laws of nature and God allows natural disasters, which are evil, to happen so that he can eventually bring a greater good out of them. There is no evil that is suffer that can be suffered through a natural disaster <coughs> excuse me that will not be repaid with good either in this life or the next life if we continue to trust in God and his goodness. Now it should also be note should also be remembered that God originally intended for us to be in the Garden of Eden, where we would have been protected from natural disasters, but we, because of our sinfulness, chose to abandon that way of life, and now we're living in exile. And in the new heaven and the new earth, Eden will be fully restored. So there will not be any natural disasters. In that life, that life is going to last forever. So if we choose to follow God, there's no suffering in this that we can endure in this life that's not going to be outmatched 10,000 fold or more in the next life. Can you pause the video right now and tell me what the Ten Commandments are? All right, I'm going to go with the cap. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go with the Catholic ordering, which is uh, slightly different than the Protestant ordering. So, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have any other gods before me, nor make any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Honor the Sabbath to keep it holy. Honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. So there you go. I just named all Ten Commandments. And if you know them, and good for you if you do, why do so many Christians believe that the first four of them belong on government property and in the classrooms? Well, it's, it's the first three in the Catholic ordering, but that's... A different matter entirely. So <clears throat> I think so many Christian. I do agree that a lot of Christians want to make the government enforce religion, which is not what the United States of America is called to do right now. It is <clears throat> the United States of America is a secular state and as such has no authority <clears throat> to coerce in matters of religion. And even if the United States tried to, that would not be very effective at getting people to follow the religion. And history has shown that, <coughs> excuse me, Christianity has spread far more effectively when Christians are acting like Jesus Christ than when they're trying to spread Christianity by the sword. However, I will also say this, which is something that Inspiring Philosophy pointed out in his response to the same video, and that is, <clears throat> when the Ten Commandments are on government property, that's not necessarily a symbol of religion, it's just a symbol of law. As in saying, oh, okay, here's a place that's done law, Here's a place where law is practiced, oh, and here's a symbol of an ancient law code. So we're just continuing in that tradition of establishing law and order. It's, it's not necessarily, oh, we want the government to enforce Christianity. 
So that's an interesting thought. All right, anyway, on to the next question. Would you feel comfortable saying the Pledge of Allegiance in class every day if the words were one nation under no God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all? No, I would not. And I would absolutely refuse to I'd absolutely refuse to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Now when it comes to atheists who don't feel comfortable <coughs> excuse me. When it comes to atheists who don't feel comfortable saying the Pledge of Allegiance because it contains under God, I absolutely think that they should not be coerced into saying the Pledge of Allegiance. First of all, God cares more about what's in your heart than any external gestures that you give towards him. So if you say, so saying under God as an atheist isn't going to make God any more pleased. So yeah, I really think that a lot of conservatives in this country are way, way, way too concerned with uh, forcing people to say the pledge and being offended when people don't say the pledge. When really, it, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to say it right now. Also, the Supreme Court has ruled that students <clears throat> cannot be forced to say the Pledge of Allegiance. And I personally agree with that ruling, that we should not force people to say the Pledge of Allegiance, because all that's going to do is make them go resentful. It's not going to make them want to follow God anymore. It's just going to make them hate religion in general. So yeah, sorry for that tangent. Let's just move on. Do you think it's just a coincidence that different religions are popular in different parts of the world? Do you no, I don't think it's a coincidence because tradition <clears throat> in all cultures is very powerful and it's very difficult to change. So, if, <clears throat> for example, in India, Hinduism has traditionally been the most popular religion for millennia. Like, <coughs> excuse me. Like even before the first archaeological records we have of Judaism, we know Hinduism was a thing in India. So when so if Christian missionaries go there, it's going to be very difficult to change <clears throat> go to India to try to spread Christianity. It's going to be very difficult to get people to deconvert from Hinduism, especially if their family has been following that religion as far back as it, as it can be traced. Do you believe that if you were born in Saudi Arabia, you would be a Muslim rather than a Christian? Probably. Maybe I would be a Muslim, but here's the thing. I see a lot of atheists bring up this objection of, oh, if you were born in different circumstances, you wouldn't be what you are now. And it's almost comical the lack self-awareness that they have because, well, Hamant Mehta, atheist voice, if you, <coughs> sorry, if you were born in Saudi Arabia, you would probably be a Muslim too. If you were born in ancient Greece, you probably would believe in the Greek pantheon. <coughs> Excuse me. If you were born in medieval Europe, you'd probably be Catholic like I am. If you were born in first century Judea, you'd probably be Jewish. I mean, this... We can all say that, oh, if we had been born in different circumstances, we wouldn't believe what we believe now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that what we believe is false. We can... I have critically examined my beliefs on religion, and I have found that Catholicism holds up. And that's going to be true regardless of whether or not I would have been Catholic had I been born in different circumstances. Is it possible that religion has less to do with what's true and more to do with the circumstances of where and when you were born? False dichotomy. People can... People can choose to believe the religion for a multitude of reasons. They can choose 
to believe because they are pressured into believing it because that's the religion they were the religion they were raised in and at the same time also seek out good reasons to justify <clears throat> whether philosophical or historical or what have you that justify their belief in that religion it's not an either or but also i'm going to say this again just because someone chooses to believe in a religion solely because that's how they were raised that does not mean that that religion is per se false it just means that someone has bad reasons <coughs> excuse me because someone has has bad reasons for believing what they believe i mean i could have ridiculously bad reasons for believing that the earth is round but that doesn't that doesn't justify the flat earth community also it's a lot of atheists spring this up that they try to say they, they try to sound like the only reason someone could believe in a religion is because that's how they grew up and it's there's no reason based on it no other good reasons for it but that is ridiculously dismissive of all the people thousands of people <coughs> who have changed their religion like me, I did not grow up Catholic, yet now I am Catholic, because I did the research and I found that <clears throat> the best historical evidence indicates that Jesus Christ founded the Catholic Church. I was not, I'm not Catholic because I was raised in it, I'm Catholic because, <coughs> excuse me, because I honestly believe that Catholicism is true. I mean, there are people who convert religions all the time. Heck, even even most atheists were not raised atheist. Most atheists now were raised Christian. Now, I know atheism is not a religion, it's the lack of a religion. But still, atheists who grew up Christian are examples of people who changed their mindset on religion. So if you're so like if you're watching this and you're an atheist who was raised Christian, if you can change your beliefs about religion, other people can too. <coughs> there are people who've gone from atheist to Christian. There are people who've gone from Christian to Muslim and Muslim to Christian. People can change their minds on religion. It's not just oh people. It's not just, oh, people are religious because that's how they were raised. There's a lot more that goes into it. Do you believe childbirth is an example of a miracle? No, childbirth is part of a natural order, and a miracle, by definition, is something that happens beyond the natural order. It is an example of something, <clears throat> of a thing in nature, of the capacities of a thing in nature being raised, to produce an effect that is beyond what it would be able to produce naturally. Childbirth is purely part of the natural order. So no, it is not a miracle. Does that mean Hitler was once a miracle baby? Stupid question. I'm just gonna skip it. And if childbirth is a miracle, how come that miracle happens thousands and thousands of times every week? Well, I already said I don't believe it is a miracle because it's part of the natural order, but I should also say that <clears throat> when most people say that childbirth is a miracle, they're not saying that it's something beyond the natural order. They're saying that they're exaggerating. They're just saying that this is an incredibly awe-inspiring thing, which it certainly is. So... <clears throat> It certainly is that new life is being created in this in this event that certainly is something that's awe inspiring and therefore if that's how they're going to define miracle then childbirth is a miracle regardless of how often it happens anyway so that was the last question <coughs> excuse me that was the last question in 
Hemant Mehta's video, so I'm finally done with this series. I hope you all enjoyed it, I hope you all got something out of it. Please be sure to like and subscribe and share this video as far as possible. My next video series I'm planning to do is uh, it's a series on basically why I'm Catholic, how I came to <clears throat> the reasons I have for accepting certain Catholic certain Catholic doctrines, such as the real presence in the Eucharist or the papacy. So please be sure to <clears throat> please be sure to be on the lookout for that. I'll see you all then, and God bless.